Hello, my name is Maddie, or Books with Maddie, and today I'm battling bone-deep exhaustion to bring you book news. It is our second installment of the new series on my channel that I like to call Book News. This series, I basically tell you the book news that's happening the week, this week. The week that I, well, no, the last week, previous week. So for example, this week encompasses April 27th to May 3rd, book news. And no, 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 that was last week. April 4th to, no, May 4th to May 10th is the week that I'm talking about in this installment of book news with Books with Maddie. Yeah, okay. We made it. Thank you for all the positive feedback on last episode of Book News with Books with Maddie. People seem to like it, so I'm going to keep going. So, deal with it. If you don't know what's going on, did I already explain? I think I already explained. I'm just bringing you book news. I'm literally so tired. I'm in, like, the last week and a half of school. Bone-deep exhaustion. Anyway, let's continue. So, the first the first section of Book News with Books with Maddie is book releases. Um, So, there was an idea for this one, which was, like, book weather the weather the book forecast for this week that's fun i'm gonna do that new new title for this installment is the book forecast first we're going to talk about the book forecast the books that are coming this week do you get it okay <laughs> like i said before we only talk about like one date because all books come out on like tuesdays basically but okay there's one that's on the 5th may 5th but it's in spain so i just wanted to let people know <laughs> that My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing was released in Spain on the 5th. Apparently it wasn't in Spain before, and now Spaniards can access that book. I read the book, it was okay, it was three stars, but just so you know, My Lovely Wife Samantha Downing now available in Spain. So if you want it in Spain, you can get it. <laughs> yeah. Next, we have a couple books that are coming out May 10th on the forecast. I feel like I don't sound like a newscaster this time. I gotta work on that. What do newscasters sound like? I think I'm leaning a little bit too heavy into the sarcasm. We're gonna shift the tone and see what happens. This week on the news fork. <laughs> this week on the news fork. The book. Wait, not the news. The book. <laughs> this week on the book forecast, we have May 10th, is the Tuesday that we're talking about this week. Starting off with Siren Queen. Siren Queen by. Nigi Vo. I'm apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly. Nigi Vo previously wrote The Chosen and the Beautiful, which is a retelling of Great Gatsby. This book is new. If I knew what it was about, I would tell you. If I'm doing book news, it's kind of my responsibility to be the one to tell you what these books are about. So give me one moment. Luli Wei is beautiful, talented, and desperate to be a star. Coming of age in pre-code Hollywood, she knows how dangerous the movie business is and how limited the roles are for Chinese-American girls from Hungarian Hill. But she doesn't care. She'd rather play a monster than a maid. But in Luli's world, the worst monsters in Hollywood are not the ones on screen. The studios want to own everything from her face to her name to the woman she loves. And they run on a system of bargains made in blood and ancient magic. Powered by the endless sacrifice of unlucky starlets like her, but those who do survive earn their fame. Success comes with a steep price. Lily is willing to do whatever it takes, even if that means becoming the monster herself. What? Okay, hang on a second, though. I didn't know what that was about until just this right second when I was reading it to you. That sounds literally amazing. It sounds like Evelyn Hugo mixed with, like, Ninth House, and I'm genuinely obsessed with it. So that's the first one of the book forecast. Also from May 10th, we have Magic Lies and Deadly Pies by Misha Pop. This has been described as a bisexual cozy mystery. And that's all the information I have for you about that one. I haven't heard a ton about this one, but it sounds really wholesome. Next, we have Jamila Green Ruins Everything by Zarka Nawaz. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. It is by one of my favorite authors, Zarka Nawaz. She previously wrote a memoir called Laughing All the Way to the Mosque. It was fabulous and hilarious. Let's read the synopsis for Jamila Green Ruins Everything. But pretend I'm not reading it. Pretend I just know what this is about. Jamila Green only has one wish, to see her memoir on the New York Times bestseller list. When her dream doesn't come true, she seeks spiritual guidance at a local mosque. New mom and recent immigrant Ibrahim Sultan is appalled by Jamila's shallowness, but agrees to assist her on one condition, that she performs a good deed. Jamila reluctantly accepts his terms, kicking off a chain of absurd and unfortunate events. That's like the 
synopsis of the synopsis. It's supposed to be very funny and light and mystery fiction humor. Sounds great. Next, Set on You by Amy Leah. This is a new romance. I believe it's a debut and it is about a woman who I believe is a personal fitness trainer or something like that. In the synopsis, she was described as like curvy. So I don't know if it's full on like fat representation, plus size representation, like what's going on with that. But I appreciated curvy girl representation. Love to see it. The only thing that I felt hesitant about this is at the end, the last sentence that's supposed to be like, but will she li open her heart? But will she, you know, let the man in? It was something like, will they become swole mates? Because it's like at the gym and I was like, that's abrasive. That's a bit too much. That's news in itself, swole mates. Okay, next on the news forecast, we have The Summer Place by Jennifer Weiner. I've never read a Jennifer Weiner book. I feel like I'm, I'm not as professional this round, this come around. I think I need to, I need to, I need to mold into the role. I'm not really supposed to be saying my opinions on the news, am I? <laughs> That's what the news is supposed to be. Anyway, The Summer Place by Jennifer Weiner. This is about a girl who falls in love in the pandemic and ends up, oh my gosh, Sorry, there was a bird outside. I thought it was a person. There, she, okay, she, fa she, she falls in love over quarantine. She decides to get married, but then, like, everything, like, her wedding planning, her wedding, everything, like, just goes wrong because, you know, she reconnects with her mother who, like, abandoned her as a child. There's, like, lots of family drama, and it seems really character-heavy, and I've been really into character-heavy books recently, so this one sounds intriguing, to say the least. Although, I haven't seen the best reviews for it yet. May 10th, Summer Place is coming out. Thus concludes this forecast for this week for books releases you're welcome next we're moving on to book announcements with books with maddie from book news <clears throat> we have a few book announcements coming this week to you first is veronica roth announced her new book which is called poster girl and will be released in october is that the 10th month i wrote 10 18 january for march april may june july august september october i'm literally so sorry. veronica roth is the author of divergent and The Chosen Ones, but I think she's probably definitely most known for Divergent. And she's writing a new book, it's called Poster Girl. That's all I know about it. I haven't looked up the synopsis yet. That was just a little bit significant. I don't think it's time to necessarily be sharing the synopsis because it's coming out in October, so I don't need to worry about that yet. Rashani Chakshi's book, Once More Upon a Time, is $1.99, the ebook for it. Sorry, the ebook for Once More Upon a Time is $1.99 on Amazon until the end of the month of May. So if you're interested in that book, go for it. I don't know what this one is about either. Sorry. I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna work on my information sources. I'm in finals week. These book newses are gonna be quick. They're gonna be short. They're gonna be abrupt and probably abrasive. Next, a new trailer was released. Now, I'm sure everybody already knows what's going on. A new trailer was released for The Summer I Turned Pretty, and it's featuring This Love by Taylor Swift, Taylor's version. Now, a lot is going on here. By the time this is posted, I think This Love, Taylor's version will be already out, which is news in itself. I mean, I could make a whole episode of book news on Taylor Swift coming out with a song. Don't know if that would be book news, but it should be. This Love, Taylor's version by Taylor Swift is coming out. And also, well, how I'm connecting this to book is, books is The Summer I Turned Pretty, <coughs> excuse me, The Summer I Turned Pretty, which is a series by Jenny Han, is being adapted in a TV show. New trailer came out for this TV show, The Summer I Turned Pretty, featuring Taylor Swift's version of This Love. <laughs> Thank you. That's it for book announcements. That felt really short and sweet, but that's, that's all I got for book announcements. Next, we have author news. We're going to do this now. Author news, here's the author news that I have for you. Elena Armaz, the author of The Spanish Love Deception, is making a playlist for The Spanish Love Deception. Now, I haven't actually updated this. We're going to check live if she's actually posted this playlist yet because she was going to share it with us. Why is this important? Because don't you also want to know what she would choose? She has not yet posted the playlist, but I will keep my eye out and I will keep you updated on Book News with Books with Maddie. Next, there's some kind of fan contest going on within the Grishaverse, you can like win stuff. I'm gonna put the information here. It ends on the 16th. That's all I know about it. I have limited news because I'm really tired. I don't know if I've put that, put that across for you yet. I'm really tired. 
Next, this is probably the biggest piece of author slash book news that's going on this week, is finally, finally, Rick Reardon has released the casting for Annabeth and Grover for the new Percy Jackson TV series on Disney+. Plus. I know people have been waiting specifically for the Annabeth cast announcement for so, 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 so long. I have pretty low investment in this personally because I haven't read Percy Jackson in a really long time. I wasn't a huge Percy Jackson fan when I was a child. I was on the red pyramid side of things. Please don't annihilate me in the comments. I am going to reread the Percy Jackson series eventually, but I'm really happy with the casting. It seems great. I was definitely pro black Annabeth and I'm very happy that they pulled through with that really was not expecting and I thought that they were gonna be cowards and fit with the status quo when they pushed against it and I love to see it and Grover Grover's great I don't remember him from the books uh he was like half he had like horns that's all I remember and I only remember that from the movie. So, yeah. That's thus concludes author news segment of Book News with Books with Maddie. Now we're on to the segment that I like to call Other Things I Want to Say. This week I don't have a lot that I want to say, to be honest, which is surprising because usually there's a lot I want to say. But I found this new website and I will have it linked in the description below. Basically, it's a tool. You put in either your zip code or your uh, the city that you're in and it will give you a list of books that take place either near you or in your city, which is very, very cool. If you live in like New York City, it's probably not as cool. I read literally one book in my life that has taken place in the city that I live and it was really cool because I was like, I know that place, I know that place, highly recommend reading a book from your hometown or the place that you're currently in or a place that you know. I'll link that little website in the description below. And that's literally all, all I have to say for the section that I like to call other things I want to say. Now for the closing segment of this new book news with Books with Maddie, I'm going to give you a recommendation because that's what I do. This month is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So I'm going to give you a book to celebrate that category. The book is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Now, when this is posted, you will not yet have seen my April wrap up, but be aware that I'm obsessed with the book I'm about to tell you about. Wait, did I already tell you what book it was? Did I already say that it was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng? What? I think I, if I didn't, the answer is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I'm gonna hold up the book so that editing me doesn't have to put in a picture. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This book follows a lot of different characters, but mainly a character named Pearl and her mother, Mia. They move into a house, like a duplex kind of situation that they rent and it's in a very whitewashed neighborhood in like the 90s and everybody there is like rich and white and it's kind of them adapting to that situation, um, figuring out where they fit in, trying to fit in and then there's also like a mystery aspect where is it like in the first, this happens in the first chapter, maybe even the first page, this is not a spoiler, they talk about how the Richardsons, which is like the other main family that the book focuses on, their house is on fire and they're trying to figure out who burned down the house and things like that. So there's like a bunch of different storylines and then there's another storyline about a woman named Bibi and her daughter, but that's like halfway through the book that storyline starts. I am genuinely obsessed with this book. This book has earned a spot on my top 10 of all time list, which I've got a lot of books. So to get a place on my top 10 of all time, it takes a lot. So genuinely am obsessed with this book. I think it is so polarizing. I think it makes you think a lot. It just, it just makes you realize that nothing is really black and white. There's so much gray area in life and this book captures that idea so, so well. So if you haven't read, I mean, I know this book is so popular, so I'm not really doing anything for it by telling you about it. But if you haven't read Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, literally do it now. Like genuinely one of my favorite books of all time. Next section of this, sh this segment, I like to call addition to my TBR, which is pretty self-explanatory. 
I have to look up the, <laughs> the, the thingy. Oh my gosh, like, words are failing me. The synopsis of the book. Okay, the book that I'm going to talk about this week is in addition to my TBR, and it is called Bodies on the Line at the Front Lines of the Fight to Protect Abortion in America. I wonder why this is the addition to my TBR this week. This book came out on April 5th, 2022, so it's very recent. When promoting nonfiction books, uh, I like to make sure that they're recent and that the information is relevant. This was published a month ago, so it's about as recent and relevant as you can get. I will now read you the synopsis of this book. In the newscaster's voice, powerfully empathetic and impeccably researched look at abortion clinic escorting. Abortion has been legal for nearly 50 years in the United States, with a new conservative majority on the Supreme Court and an emboldened opposition in the street. The threat to its existence has never been more pressing. Clinic escorts, everyday volunteers, are prepared to stand up and protect abortion access, as they have for decades, even in the face of terrorism and violence. They have lived and sometimes died to ensure that abortion remains not only accessible, but also a basic human right. Clinic escorts have fought the abortion wars on the front lines, and it's, it is clinic escorts who will win it by replacing clinic staff and patients. I completely skipped over a line. My bad. And it's, it is clinic escorts who will win it by replacing hostility with humility. Collecting the stories of these brave volunteers from around the country, including the author's own interviews with clinic staff and patients, and research and input from abortion rights experts, Bodies on the Line makes a clear case for the right to an abortion as a fundamental part of human dignity and stakes and the stakes facing us all if it ends. Bodies on the Line is a celebration of the crucial, often unsung heroes of abortion access and an inspiring call to defend this basic health care before it's too late. That sounds very, very good to me. Um, it sounds very well researched and very well put together. I'm excited to read it. I don't currently have it, but I'm planning on either borrowing it from my library or purchasing it. It sounds very, very good and very, very relevant. I think no matter what side of the equation that you're on, this seems like a book that kind of will give you the whole picture of, you know, abortion es experts, people who have gotten abortions, people who um, are just clinic escorts things like that i think this will kind of give you a full picture as well as encapsulating the consequences of denying abortion rights to the people who need them this is the real news people okay that is the end of this segment of book news with books with maddie thank you for your time for your attention they don't thank people at the end of the news do they do they thank people thank you for watching book news with books with maddie i'll be here next week hopefully Hopefully I'll still be here next week, as alive and well as I can be, here next week for you. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments below. I hope you have a great day, I hope you have a great week, I hope you have a great life, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.